The number one question I get asked is, will this welder work for my project or a certain material like aluminum? What about the thickness it can do? Spoiler, I've done all the way up to half inch thick with it. For a five year review, I figure I will highlight the good, the bad. It's gonna do it. Ugh. And along the way, I'm gonna show you projects that will most likely answer 99% of the questions you have about the Titanium 125. The two things I love about this machine are the size and weight, which in turn make this thing so portable, and the amount of power that you can still get out of a machine this size are the two reasons why this is my go-to welder. To go along with ease of portability, this is a 120 volt machine only. So you can plug it into a bigger size generator, your garage, or a 10 gauge extension cord. Yes, the thickness of extension cords does make a big difference. But there is a caveat. You do need to run it on a 20 amp breaker. It actually says it can do 3 16 Mac thickness and Mac thickness max thickness and that is totally doable done one pass you're good 3 16 and i've even done a video where i bumped it up two quarter inch and i even did half inch thick still Whew, i know half inch i had to do a bucket load of passes and so it's it's something that i i wouldn't be doing i mean more than just anyway i'm not even gonna tell you what projects to do that on now, the one thing I do want to know where I think people get hung up on, maybe with material, is I saw so many comments on, hey, can it do, you know, two inch square tubing? Or I think this is maybe a two by three rectangular tubing. And the machine can care less what the shape of the material it is. All it cares about is how thick the material is. So regardless of what um, you are welding, you just gotta make sure that the thickness itself is less than 3 16 and then you're golden. By far, the most common project and shape that I did would be with square tubing. I love it, I use it for all kinds of stuff. I did numerous railings, and if you're like me, then I never find the exact shape needed. For example, this one inch square tubing, which needed to go to this one inch round tubing. You can make it work, you just, are going to be practicing filling some gaps. Another example, which is this 3 16 inch bearing plate. I needed to go down to the frame of that round tubing. Still no issues, turned out great. And the settings I used for this were about E and 6. Oh, and then the min says 18 gauge. Um, I think I did once 20 gauge um, just to show that it can kind of go thinner and it did do that But you're going to be doing some stitch welding uh, Just so then you're not totally blown through Can be done For some reason people want to jump into aluminum projects right off the bat and Don't do that if you've never welded before Aluminum is a completely different animal and as far as the simplicity for this machine, we don't have gas hookups. You can't change the polarity. That's what's great is this is somewhat of a plug and play type machine. You don't have to worry about all those extra features or processes. We're just sticking with simple flux core welding. Okay, now since you brought it up, you do need to buy wire. Not this stuff, this is solid core wire, the shiny copper looking stuff, it's for MIG welding. Just talking about it, we can't MIG with this machine. You want to pick up the gasless flux cord wire, uh, inner shield wire, it goes by many names. All you need to know is it's kind of not the shiny copper looking stuff. It's the more expensive wire, but you don't need gas. Oh, and as far as the size, pick up 0 .030, and that will get you through, I would say, almost any of the projects you'd have to do with this machine. You can do stainless steel, though. You can actually do even a stainless to steel combo. Most people don't know, but yes, you can actually weld those two metals together. Just, you're going to run into corrosive type issues, but we're not doing a submarine here, so just know if you got some really crazy odd job that you got to mix those two metals, it can be done. One of the biggest benefits to having a flux core only machine is to be able to do outside work. And so uh, being outside in the wind, 
flux cord does not matter because you don't have gas that's blown all around. So little trailer fixes like this, super easy. I was just had to put on a very simple, just the chain back onto the railing. Five years ago, when they first came out with the titaniums, I was able to get one of the very first ones and I put out an awesome review video. I'm just kidding. It was horrible. Don't even waste your time watching it. But since then, I've actually done a couple reviews and unboxings. So I will link one in the description of my most recent one, which will actually go through the setup of the machine. What the flux is that blue gel that you always are dipping the nozzle in? Well, it is nozzle gel. Now, this is a game changer. Harbor Freight, start selling nozzle gel. And uh, what it does is it's a lubricant for the tip. <laughs> flux core is a very dirty process and so you get a lot of uh, spatter and dust that will collect on the contact tip. It clogged it and then you can't feed wire through it. Not the best when you want to weld with the machine. So all you do is you just put that on there every once in a while and then you just all that spatter just brushes right away. It's a tip saver. Here are a couple little changes that if they did really could take this machine over the moon. First would be the gun or the nozzle, the stinger, the trigger, whatever you want to call this piece. First of all, I've had all of the other titaniums and this is the only one with this crummy little style MIG gun. Uh, this is the same one as on the Chicago Electric 125. So, titanium, you already have a line of great titanium welders. Why not put the other gun on, that you have on those on this one? To go along with that would be the ground clamp. This is the cheapest like 10 cent piece of stamp steel. Now, even though if you get a good ground connection, I haven't really had an issue, I'm just saying you already have it with the other titanium, so just make it the same as those. And the other complaint would be uh, not having a little handle. So you saw the first, I actually still keep this in the box. That's why it looks so freaking brand new. Problem is I take it in and out of the box by lifting, it's gonna do it. I lift it up by the hood. I know I shouldn't, but I hate the little strap that it comes with. My suggestion, put a little handle right here with a better, you know, little clamp so then it doesn't obviously do what it just did by holding the handle. After five years and only having those couple complaints, pretty good machine. Now, I, I just wanna take a step back really quick to cord placement. Uh, way to go Harbor Freight for first of all, making the cord eight feet, not just a cheap six foot one, and then putting it on the back of the machine. The Chicago Electric 125, that one comes out the front. As you can imagine, you lose about two feet because it's, it's coming out the front and it's gotta go the length of the machine in cord length. I call these infinite control. I know there's some probably special potentiometer name for it. Regardless, they are not steps. So you can go in between the numbers if you want. It's not a simple one, two, three, four. And that just allows you to really dial in the settings for specific materials, thicknesses, and shapes. Okay, now some will knock the 90 day warranty. And I say, Harbor Freight really has one of the best hassle-free type warranties. If there is any issue whatsoever, which I really believe if you did get a lemon, it would show us signs of it within 90 days. So it's you just take it in and they exchange it, no questions asked. So that end of it, yeah, it's not as long as some of the others, but it really is a hassle-free warranty that they offer. If your project is steel and less than 3 16 inch thickness, this machine can handle it. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.